Okay, we are at the back left battery pack, and back here there's actually a little port specifically designed for pressure testing the battery pack. This is to make sure no air can get out, so in theory no air can get in. Uh, normally there's just a little tiny plug uh, back in there, like an eighth inch NPT plug. I've got my five millimeter hex, just unscrewed that, and then in its place I screwed in this little contraption. So what this is, is just a short piece of brass pipe, a T connector, and a Schrader valve. So this is just like what you'd have on a, a car or bicycle tire. So it lets you put air in, but as soon as you release that valve shuts up and the air can't come back out. Over on this side, I just have a very small uh, hose barb connection and then th this hose is going up to the manometer. And what a manometer is, if I'm even pronouncing that right, uh, uh, basically it's just a very low pressure gauge. You can use it for testing vacuum and some other things. But it's pretty inexpensive, and you can see it's got three spots after the decimal point when I'm in uh, using PSI as units. So to pressure test this, we're supposed to put in no more than 0.2 PSI, which that's pretty low. That's about like uh, blowing air out through a drinking straw. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some air in here and I'm not even using an air compressor. I don't need that flow or that pressure. I am just going to use my little portable uh, battery powered air pump. And even if I'm outputting air at like 10 PSI, remember that the whole battery pack is going to be filling with air. Uh, so the actual pressure increasing is going to be pretty slow. So I'll just take the air pump, lock it in place, and then I'm going to run the pump while paying attention to our gauge here. The official Tesla instructions call for using a special pressure regulator, which can bring your shop air down to less than 0.2 psi. I was not able to find one of those easily and affordably, so I do not have one. So I'm just using this air pump instead. So I'll stop it around there. And we can see the pressure is dropping right away. Maybe it's coming back through the air valve though. Let's put a little more air in here. And no, our air pressure is dropping. There's no air coming out here, I'd feel it. So this battery has failed the pressure test. So now I gotta figure out um, where that's coming from. So that'll be a visual inspection. That might be a uh, spray bottle of soapy water, but we see that number going down. And uh, that means, for example, uh, rainwater could possibly get in the pack and we can't have that. Plus, I just caulked this up last night, and who knows, maybe I didn't use enough caulk. That would suck. Um, I'd be a lot happier if it was just replacing an umbrella valve, so I'm going to check those first. So down under the sides of the battery pack, we've got these umbrella valves, which I up updated to the most recent style. So in each section of six, and to have six umbrella valves, it's two umbrella valves three plugs and a Gore-Tex breather. And I have that Gore-Tex breather temporarily replaced with just a one inch silicone rubber plug. Uh, Cause of course those breathers would let um, air through, not water, but air. And if you can see right here on the wide shot, I can see it right up here. There's a little bit of O-ring sticking out. We actually have a pinched O-ring. And here, not just on this side, but uh, over here, this one as well. And when we have good light and we aren't working at night and we aren't tired from working on the project, it's a lot easier to notice this. Um, when I, I installed these, they all felt like they popped in just fine. And depending on the angle you're looking at, um, you don't even notice that at all. Of course, now with the camera in just the right position and everything, it, it seems really, really obvious. I think part of the other problem here is that uh, these come in strips, 
Now this one I actually have cut apart because uh, I took that gore breather out. But you can see, for example, these two are stuck together. And I, I think that's part of the issue because you kind of have to snap one in place and then the other one kind of swing it up into place. And I think that's the problem here. So I'm going to snip these apart. I'm going to gently pry this out. I'm um, going to try really hard to not snap the little uh, clips on the back. Straighten out the O-ring and then push it back in place. Trying to not... Ah, damn it. I was going to say I'm trying not to pry on the O-ring, but... You can see one of those two clips broke. So I can still put this up in there, but I don't know how well it's going to stay. I got the O-ring straightened out. I'm going to push this straight in instead of swinging this time. And that feels pretty good. And I can give it a little spin and a push. And that's what it should look like, but I'll have to double check this one. And so, for example, I'll just use a piece of masking tape to mark it so I remember which one it is. Okay, third time's the charm. All right. So that time, this bent in a little bit, but it did not snap off. Just looking at it, make sure O-ring looks good. These already came with like a little like lubricant sealant on them. And the other thing is, since it's not um, connected anymore, I can also give it a little bit of a spin while it's in there. Now I also just noticed this umbrella valve, um, it seems like it's installed well. It's nice and straight here, but on the back, it feels like it's up just a little tiny bit and sticking my head under here, I could not see that, but I can feel it's up a little bit and I bet that's got a pinched O-ring back there too. So I'll also have to check that. Mmm, shoot. Still dropping. Still got a leak somewhere. One of the issues I had with the pump was I had to manually start and stop it, and it filled up the pack pretty quick. So what I ended up doing instead was using my aquarium pump, which is a diaphragm pump, and that can run at uh, much lower pressures. So I could start that. It would take a little longer to fill, but then I could um, just kind of let it run for a bit to counteract the leak, and that gave me a lot more time to run around the pack looking for leaks. The other thing that I had done uh, at the end of the day yesterday was to add an extra bead of caulk down both sides. I'm going to stop it at about 0 0.15, 0 0.16, something like that. Okay, and close the valve. And we can see the pressure dropping. Um, it's not as fast as it was yesterday. Uh, the pressure drop has definitely slowed but we still want to see less than 0 0.01 drop in 60 seconds, and this is definitely going faster than that. So what I'll do is I'll put a little bit more air in here, um, close the valve, and keep looking for leaks. So the process really was just using a spray bottle of soapy water all over the top of the pack, 
to look for air bubbles. Anywhere some air might be leaking out. I'd already taken care of the bottom sides with the, uh, the umbrella valves and the plugs. And on the top, I did find a few bolts like that one yesterday, uh, where it looked like what had happened is since I had somebody else helping me while we put all the bolts in, um, I didn't double check his work and we accidentally had a, a couple of bolts that weren't torqued down all the way. So I just added a little bit more sealant and made sure it was to proper torque and that took care of that there. But finding essentially the final leak was still a lot of work, still a, a lot of looking around here. But here finally, I found it. So this is up on the front left corner. There's kind of this goofy seam where this is the cover and this is the penthouse lid where they overlap here. And there's, it's, it's weird right here. So I even put some extra caulk, which you can see is a total mess, but, um, you know, this little trim piece was still in place. So I removed that. There you go. So you can see that bubble, still a tiny little leak right there. Okay, I just cut away a bunch of the extra gross caulk there. Looks like there's two spots actually. It looks like here and here. So after some further examination, what I found is that the right hand screw had actually stripped out the aluminum threads of the case. I ended up removing both of these screws, installing a helicoil to make new threads for this right hand screw, peeled back the metal just a little bit, put in additional sealant, and then reinstalled these two screws and torqued them down appropriately. After that, I pressure tested again, and this time it passed. Yay! So now that the battery passed the pressure test, I'm going to pull out these test plugs and replace them with the Gore breather valve. So this is designed to let air pass through, but not water. So if these were in there, you know, you wouldn't be able to pressurize the pack. So I used these one inch uh, silicone rubber plugs to do that. And now I'll put these in. So I had to replace one of these at each of the main cell module bays. And then, of course, I made sure it went in nice and straight, that the O-ring was not pinched, and it was uh, installed well now that I knew what I was doing. And then back under the front left corner, got to remove that little plug and replace it with the small gore breather that goes up in there. After that, the cover with its mesh filter goes up in place, and it's held in with a series of screws. And now that all the umbrella valves and plugs and the like are taken care of, the ski side covers can go back on. And that, of course, is using a series of clamps to hold them up so that we can put the screws in without stripping them out. I also thought it would be a good idea just to put a little bit of caulk right up in this front area right here. In the next video, we're going to finish up what needs to be done before installing the battery in the car. That includes adding some coolant, installing the ceramic blanket, and installing the plastic cover that goes over the top of the battery pack. I hope you like these videos. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time. Stay charged up.